<clears throat> All right. Well, hey, everybody. Grim Green back here today. I apologize for the lack of videos this week, but I was in Sweden last week, so there's not going to be any review videos this week. But what there is going to be this week is a full vlog on Thursday. And right now I wanted to show you guys an interview that I did with Brent Stafford from RegulatorWatch.com. Brent and RegulatorWatch.com have been doing loads, loads of really fantastic, fantastic videos on the subject of vaping, legal vaping, uh, state and local governments passing legislation, the FDA, even things in Canada like that. They they cover it all. And I had the pleasure of sitting down with Brent and shooting this interview. I think it came out, I mean, fantastic. It's far and away the most professional thing I've ever done. It's far more, I mean, far more professional than my videos. I'll put a link down in the description to the Regulator Watch YouTube where you can check out all the videos they have done, including things with like uh, Kasa, Alex has been on it, uh, my advocacy hero JBC has been on it. Uh, I know Phil Basardo has been on Regulator Watch, and now I get to be on Regulator Watch, and it, and it feels really good. It, Brent is a great guy, and RegulatorWatch.com is a fantastic website covering all of the legality and uh, legislation that's happening in the vapor world. So here it is. Check it out. It's not too long, um, but yeah, I, I really hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Brent Stafford, and this is RegWatch by RegulatorWatch.com. Who is Nick Grim Green? Well, if you don't know, you've probably been living under a rock for the past six or seven years. Grim is one of the most popular YouTubers, creating videos on vaping products, news, and advocacy. He's amassed over 300,000 subscribers and 50 million video views. Grim is joining us today in an interview we shot just before Dr. Scott Gottlieb, the new FDA commissioner, announced a four-year delay in the pre-market tobacco application process, which if implemented would certainly have killed the vaping industry in the U.S. And now that outcome is far from certain. It's great news for vapors, and of course, RegWatch will have detailed coverage in upcoming episodes. And now, the fabulous Mr. Grim Green. Nick, thanks for joining us here on RegWatch. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of oh, course. You, you bet. First off, what kind of videos do you produce about vaping and why? Uh, I, I, I used to just do a review. I review products. Um, when I first started vaping back in 2009, I was just amazed at how well it worked for me. And so I thought I, I, I would like to get on the internet and tell people about this and about how great it is and how well it worked for me. And you know, back in 2009, uh, there was no vapors on YouTube. Um, YouTube wasn't a career thing like it is now. It was just a place to get information and share funny cat videos or whatever and i thought wow that could be a really good platform to just get up there and start talking about vaping and what worked for me and and new products and i figured if i could help some people get to where i was then then that would be a really good thing and i and i picked it up heavily as a hobby you know so that uh, the motivation then was pretty much solely at the time to help smokers try to quit yeah, absolutely. Help help smokers try to quit. Um, you know, I still I still really focus on helping smokers quit. And what I focus on a lot more now is I, I feel like every vapor deserves to have a really good vaping experience. You know what I mean? A lot of people get into it and they'll have, they'll have like a, a burnt flavor or a weird tank or maybe a battery that doesn't quite charge. And a lot of that's troubleshooting. And so I like to think of myself as like a, a YouTube uh, troubleshooter, I guess. Well, hey, everybody, it's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com. Thank you so much for joining me again here on Wild Card Wednesday. What are we going to be talking about this Wednesday? This little guy right here. So this is the Jabo Wismac Suck My Mod Drip Tank called the Theorem Drip Tank. It's a, uh, huh, it's a strange little thing. I am incredibly passionate about vaping. It's the one thing that's kept me from smoking cigarettes for the last seven years years. I do believe it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool for helping people stay away from traditional tobacco cigarettes. From the very beginning, even back in 2009, it was an uphill battle. Uh, there weren't very many vapors at all, but there was still a lot of 
legislation going on. Um, back in 2010, actually, California tried to completely, completely ban vaping. And at the time, Governor Schwarzenegger, he vetoed it and said that if adults want to use these, then adults should be able to use these. And I knew from that moment that it was going to be an uphill battle probably just continuing on for as long as vaping exists in the world. And so I, I feel like it's uh, it's someone like me who's on YouTube, who has a following. Uh, I feel like it's a strong responsibility to to communicate that and to to inform and, and educate people on the subject of vaping and what's going on in, on a federal and on a state level as well. I think that's a bit unusual, Nick, because there are a lot of YouTubers that are in the vaping space tend to shy completely away from advocacy. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, everybody can do whatever they want to do. That's that's basically where I'm at. I think I feel really strongly about advocacy because I've I've been vaping for a little over eight years now and I'm making YouTube videos for just as long. And so from the very beginning, like I said, it was an uphill battle and this isn't something that we can just easily give up on. And I think a lot of the new vapors that haven't been around to see all these horrible things and horrible legislation that is getting introduced and passed in certain states maybe don't feel as compelled to, uh, to, to you know, get involved or to do something, you know. Um, there's people way above my pay grade that are full-time advocates that travel to Washington, that travel to these, you know, state uh, Senate committee meetings and health committee meetings, and they do it full-time. Um, I do this much compared to what they do is this much, but I feel like if everybody did this much, uh, we might be in a lot uh, better place than we are right now. This is a leading question, however. Sure. Do you feel that the regular vapor out there is doing enough? You know, I, I meet a lot of, of really passionate, dedicated vapors. The, the vapors that I talk to via social media or emails or anything like that, they are always, always looking for guidance. Uh, just the other day, I got an email uh, from a fella in the Midwest who said, hey, Grim, I don't have a lot of vapors here. I joined CASA. I write letters. I email congressmen. You know, what else can I be doing? There's people who are really, really passionate about it and I think that's I think that's unbelievable. And there's a lot of vapors who uh, it's you know, they, they pass through the community and, the, and they get a vape that they like and then they don't really partake in in the community aspect of it. They don't watch YouTube videos. They don't go on Reddit and look at the eSig subreddit or anything like that. And for them, vaping is just another issue along with, you know, things like health care and other political things. It's just another issue that they're not necessarily really fired up about like a, a lot of the other vapors that I talk to that have been around for a long time. When you look at what's going on in the U.S., it's hard not to see the politics behind it. It seems yes. clearly that it's a left-right issue and uh, and it's unusual that the left is seems to be the problem. The right seems to be very supportive. How do you explain that? And and if that is the case, what does that mean? Yeah, it's uh, it's you're it's very confusing. Uh, it, it is definitely a political issue. I, I very much believe that. I think the San Francisco flavor ban is a really good example of that. This legislation gets introduced as a political thing and not realizing how it will really, really affect people. And harm reduction isn't a foreign concept to a lot of these politicians. I mean, there's needle exchanges in place uh, for, for addicts. So harm reduction isn't a foreign concept, um, but they are very anti-vaping, anti-tobacco, especially in California. And it is, it, it's very political. I mean, Cohen, the, the, the girl that introduced the flavor ban, she's been on the news. She's been on a thousand different websites. Vapors are talking about her. Advocacy groups are talking about her. I, I feel like that translates into good political, you know, clout, as it were. Well, yes, uh, it seems to be the case. Uh, it's a rallying cry across the Democratic Party, you know, state and federal. Yeah. Yeah, it, it really is. And it's so bizarre because uh, sometimes I'll watch Fox News, which is, you know, generally a very conservative uh, news network. And they are there's a lot of people in Fox News that are very, very pro vaping, very anti-regulation, personal freedom, pro vaping, which is 
I don't know, unexpected, I guess, when we have uh, Democrats or liberals who are in favor of things like tobacco or, you know, harm reduction. And it's just very conflicting. I think they agree on a lot of things, but they don't want to agree because they're part of conflicting political ideologies. I, you know, my opinion on that is that vaping has kind of brought out a bizarro Jerry world. Yeah, it has definitely brought out a bizarro Jerry world, a very bizarro Jerry world. One last big important uh, brouhaha question, and that mm. is brouhaha. Who is the enemy? Oh man, I wouldn't even. That's a that's a really difficult question to answer. Um, can I think about it? For, who do you think is the enemy? Oh, the left. The left. You think it's the left? You're firmly in the left. Yeah, yeah it's the left. Uh, I tend to go that way as well. I think the left is the enemy. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I don't think it's just the left, but I think it's what the left has been doing for so long that they don't know any differently as far as regulations, taxes, that's just what they do. And so when vaping comes along, of course they're gonna use the same method that they've been using for the last however hundred years um, they're going to apply their leftist democratic, you know, uh, ideal to vaping. And it just that that's that doesn't work. That's just not going to work. Overregulation isn't going to work. And, you know, you can talk to a lot of people who will say, oh, I think uh, big tobacco is the enemy. And I don't I don't necessarily think that big tobacco is the enemy. And there's a lot of people who say, I think big pharma is the enemy. Big pharmaceuticals in the United States, huge enemy. I don't really think that they're the biggest enemy. I genuinely think that regulation is the enemy. And unfortunately, the regulation came from Obama era administration, heavy, heavy regulation from the Democrats. There's, I mean, there's no way to tiptoe around that. They want a nationwide flavor ban. They want heavy regulations. They, they don't want vapors to be vapors. They don't want vaping to be a thing. And you know, I, I've said this a thousand times and it's hard to talk politics on my YouTube because I, I tend to not generally get so serious about politics, but if Hillary Clinton had been elected, vaping would be gone by the end of the year. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. It seems to me that if you are not able to face the enemy, to really identify who your enemy is, or if you do when you realize that it's you staring yourself back in the mirror. <laughs> yeah, right. How, right. Do you, how do you effectively fight that then? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. I mean, that's one of the uphill battles of vaping is really being a pro vaping in spite of other things that, you know, other political leanings or stances you might have. I mean, it's, it's disruptive, you know, it's a disruptive industry. It's not just disruptive to tobacco, it's disruptive to politics as well. And I think we see that firsthand. So, uh, Grim, let me ask you, what's up next for you? Oh, I've got uh, all sorts of big plans. Um, right now, I'm really focusing on my YouTube. I opened up a Patreon account where my supporters can, you know, give me money directly for my content. And so I'm doing everything I can to really nurture that relationship and do special things for, for my Patreons. Uh, I love my YouTube. It's co it's constantly growing. Um, we, you know, me and my buddy Dwayne, Omboy OC, we do hardware. We have the recoil RDA. I do liquid lines. Um, one of the things I'm planning, hopefully for later this year, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but I'm planning a tour. Like if I was a band, I would be going on tour. And what I'm going to do is visit vape shops and I'm going I'm to organize a big tour and it's going to be a fun big tour party with an RV and, and vape shops and uh, just you know, really bringing the community together. Um, there's a lot of vape events that happen throughout the United States, and I try to go to as many of them as I can. And there's just some places I've never been where I've never got to meet the people that watch my videos. I've never been to places like Idaho. You know, I don't, I've never met any of my subscribers in Idaho. So I want to go to Idaho and meet the people that are supporting me and watching my videos. And so that's something I don't want to say too much, but that's something we planned later. You know, it's, it's always, you're always moving forward. you you always, you have to hustle. You have to move forward. You have to build your empire. And, uh, that's what I'm trying to do.